Welcome to Bring Your Brilliance. Are you ready to find and amplify your voice? Looking to be inspired by those who are already out there making it happen? Listen in as we shine a light on those who bring their full, authentic selves to do what they love, make no apologies, and don't try to fit into other people's boxes. With your host, Carla Taylor, who, after years of being inspired by the brilliantly shining people she was meeting, decided others need to hear these stories too. Good morning and welcome to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show. I am your host, Carla Taylor, and we are here on the Inspired Choices Network. And this morning I have an incredible guest that I can't wait to share with you. And most of you probably are having all sorts of conversations in your life, and they may not all be positive, but I encourage you, and I say this a lot, to make sure you're surrounding yourself with really positive people who inspire you to do the things that you want to be doing and what you're wanting to be focused on. And Linda is one of those people. So I am really excited to share her with you. She's one of those brilliantly shining people that I've been meeting in my life. And she is a powerhouse. She has been knocking it out of the park day after day, week after week, and I'm excited to bring her here now to you on this show because this is a woman who doesn't know um, the word impossible. (laughs) She is someone who has proven everybody wrong time and time and time again when they say it can't be done, there's no way to do it now, all of those naysayers that you may have in your life or may even hear about from afar, uh, but for most of us, we hear some of these things around us, and it's really important to know that um, you don't have to take no for an answer. And in fact, right now, even though a lot of people are lamenting about the economy and talking about the fact that no one's buying or there's no way to make any money right now, this is not how Linda operates. And so today's show is all about how to make money now in any economy. So, do you want to make money now but have no idea how? Do you want to have the ability to print money on demand? How awesome does that sound? In any economy. And do you want to have consistent five-figure months? So, today I am talking with the no-nonsense powerhouse that is Linda Hales, TEDx speaker and international coach of the print money on demand system, Linda recently, like in the last month, had her own $25,000 month in the middle of the pandemic and helped her clients to do the same. So she's going to share her secrets for for success. Linda is a straight-talking, no-sugar-coating, results-getting, high-energetic, highly energetic speaker and high-performance coach. She teaches her clients to go from setting goals that they never achieve to making success predictable. Linda knows this is possible because she went from being a divorced single mom on public assistance with a GED to getting a degree, opening a business, writing a book, becoming the go-to girl for life and relationship advice, and becoming a master sales and enrollment ninja. She became the head translator at Lakewood Church, which is the largest church in the nation, delivered a TEDx talk, is an international keynote speaker and corporate trainer. Her passion is to help her clients unleash their full potential by mastering the art of closing sales so they can have multiple five-figure months. So, Linda, 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 welcome to our show. Hey, I'm so happy to be here. Um, Actually, this is before. I'm not even supposed to be awake right now because (laughs) being an entrepreneur, I get to choose when I start work. So usually I I begin with my first client at 11 o'clock in the morning central time. So, uh, you know, it's not – I'm telling you, it's why you want to be your own boss. But um, I'm so glad to be here because I have my coffee right next to me, so we're good. (laughs) <laughs> That's great. And thank you so, so much for waking up early just for us. We really appreciate it, and we can't wait to hear all the juicy, wonderful, awesome things that you're going to share with us today. Well, I'm here so, for it. Let's go, good. baby. Let's go, baby. Well, the way I always start my show with my guests is because I want people to know, and we kind of talked about this actually in your <laughs> intro, but I really love to help people understand how to connect from A to B and how does somebody get from where you started to where you are now. So 
I described a little bit of it, but but tell us a little bit more about that journey and how did you go from your beginnings and, and where you started in your career to where you are now? Awesome. Well, <clears throat> everyone has a story, right? And my story mm-hmm. begins with being a child of preachers. My parents <clears throat> were ultra, I call it ultra, because I don't even know mm-hmm. what adjective to add to the type of religious people that my parents were. So I, mm-hmm. I call them ultra religious people. I grew up in a Pentecostal home. Everything was a sin. And um, I got pregnant at 16. And my parents pulled me out of school because they were embarrassed. It's not because it was the best thing for me. They were mm-hmm. scared of what the church people would say about them. So, mm-hmm. you know, when, when, I, when I look back on my life, this is where my limiting beliefs began because my father was very judgmental. And my father, like I said, he was concerned that the church might say that he was a bad father, they, that they would be judged as we are bad parents because our, our daughter got pregnant. And so they pulled me out of school. I was on track to graduate with honors because I was an honor roll student. And I had dreams of being a lawyer. I also had dreams of going to school to study abroad in Spain. Don't ask me why Spain. You know, I'm Puerto Rican. I speak Spanish. I've never been to Spain. But Spain looked like so attractive to me to leave you know, the country and go study abroad. So I had big things, but I got pregnant and my father pulled me out of school. They didn't worry about, my parents didn't worry about, uh, let's get her a GED, let's get her a diploma, nothing. They were like, you're going to be nothing but a mom. And Hmm. no man is going to want you now that you have a baby. And my father was very clear. I am not spending money on sending you to study anything. Because you're, wow. you are going to be lucky if any man wants to get with you. So I'm going to force you to get married. And so in one day, you know, uh, he pulled me out of school. I remember um, crying because I didn't want to be withdrawn from school. And I was forced to go to the courthouse and get married because I was 16. And um, I clearly recall when the, when, the, when the justice of the peace person was uh, – asking me, do I take this guy to be my lawfully wedded husband? I was crying because I did not want to get married at 16. Wow. And, um, and so I, I got married because that's what I was forced to do. Uh, when the baby was born, I, I told my father, I don't want to be married to this guy. He was very abusive. And my father said, well, I don't care if you get divorced now because um, your son is not a bastard. Your son has a father and a last name, so do whatever you want. And so I got hmm. divorced, and my father kept saying, you know, you're going to be lucky if anybody gets with you now because, you know, you have a baby. Because my father was born in 1930, so in his culture, in his, you know, uh, the way that he lived, it was important for a woman to be a virgin. It was mm. important, and if you, if you were not a virgin, then you're no good in life. And so as I continued on through my life, I kept getting into relationships that were not with the greatest men, but I was, quote, unquote, I was I was lucky that he was with me. I was mm. glad. And so, you know, when, when people ask me, where did it start? I have to say that's where it started because at that, at that young age, my father was successful in transferring a story to me that was not mine. Those were his beliefs. But because mm-hmm. I was so young and I didn't have anyone coaching me or telling me, hey, you can do what you want. You can go after your dreams. As a matter of fact, when I turned 18, I went to see a recruiter an army recruiter. And oh my God, I was so excited because he told me, look, all you need to do is give your parents a power of attorney while you go to a uh, boot camp and we have jobs for you. Cause I took the ASVAB and I came home so, so excited uh, at the dinner table because one thing we did was we had dinner together every evening. It was not like in today's times where everybody has dinner in their room. I'm an only child. So I had dinner with my parents every every mm-hmm. evening, and I sat at the table, and I was like, Dad, I'm so excited, because my father was also a veteran. He went to the Army, so I was, I was for sure that he was going to be excited to hear that I wanted to enlist in the Army, and so I said, hey, mm-hmm. Dad, I went to see a recruiter. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. I'm finally going to get to go have a career and do amazing things, and my father looked at me, come across the table, and he said, I am not watching your kid. So you can go to the army and get pregnant again. And I was just wow. like, what? He was like, plus, what do you think they want you in the army for? You're a woman. They probably want you to go clean some floors or something. You don't even clean the floors here. 
you're not going to be great in the army. Wow. And so I don't think that my father's intent was to tell me, you know, I don't think it was malicious. It was just his life, what was important to him. Right. And so it's really important to note that I grew up in Orlando, Florida. I'm not talking about this happened to me in a third world country. <laughs> it was 1989 when I had my son. I was 17 months. And this happened in the United States. And so it's, it's so – I have such a passion in my heart for women who come from uh, other countries or women of minority groups because our parents come to this country and they still believe that they can run life in a new country with the same beliefs that worked in their country. But that's not true. Right. And, right. That's, and that's still true today. So that's where my story began truly then. And then I got married, and I stayed married for almost 12 years to a wonderful man, quote, unquote, who worked for, for a living. He was a Marine. Then he was a police officer. He was a sergeant for the sheriff's office. He provided uh, well. He was a great provider. He wasn't lazy. This man was not a man that I woke up on, you know, on any given day. It was like, you're not, you're not at work. Why are you sleeping on the couch? My ex-husband was not a lazy man. He was a great provider, but he was also a serial cheater, and he was abusive, and um, yeah. he, he, he couldn't connect emotionally. And I kept doing everything that, quote, unquote, the Bible taught me to do be a good woman, cook, never deny yourself to him. I mean, I was bringing people from the church to pray at my house because I I was for sure this is going to uh, change, you know, God is listening to me. God sees my quote unquote sacrifice. But I also thought that I was being punished because like my father would say, I'd be lucky to find a man that would get quote unquote get with me. So it's important for me to say that even though that has nothing to do with sales, and right. it has nothing to do with making money. But that's where my mindset began. And last mm -hmm. night on my Facebook uh, page, I did a live stream where I was talking about all the women in the Bible and specifically the Proverbs 31 woman because, you know, so many Christian women are also, uh, they message me on Facebook, Linda, I need help. And then when I tell them how much it is to work with me, they either get offended or they say, I'm a Christian woman. I should be able to help them for free. Hmm. But the the woman in Proverbs 31, she she gets up in the morning and she works vigorously. She sees that her trading is profitable. So she's in business. She considers a field and she buys it. She selects wool and flax with her eager hands. She provides food like merchant ships. She uh, She actually helps the poor and the needy. Um, when it snows, she doesn't worry because her family has fine linen and they're clothed in scarlet. And her husband is respected when he sits among his friends because she is such an amazing, you know, woman. They're, they're like, dude, your wife is all of that. Right. So right. nowhere in, <laughs> in, in Proverbs, nowhere does the Bible say that this woman wakes up at 11 o'clock. It doesn't say that she asked her husband for permission to go buy any of the fields. It says she considers a field and she buys it. It doesn't say she asked her husband for permission to buy a field. And then from her earnings, she planted a vineyard when her husband gave her permission. It doesn't say that. Right? So right. somewhere we, I learned from a young girl that I had to be submissive and my husband had to give me the okay to do everything. And I couldn't make any decisions. But clearly the Bible says that you, if you are a virtuous woman, you are a woman and you provide for your family. You wake up early and you feed the servants. You, you provide. It clearly, about five or six times in that Bible passage, it states that this woman buys and she, and she trades and she buys and she trades and she invests her money when she, you know, when she sells a piece of land, she buys a vineyard. So as I started getting older, and I started seeking for my own get out of here, you know, like, uh, how can I get out of here? And I started mm -hmm. reading the Bible. I started saying, no one taught me this. No one right. taught me this. And all of the other women of the Bible, Esther, who freed her people, Esther, who broke the rules by going before a king when she wasn't supposed to. Then you have Ruth, who was coached by Naomi to position herself to win in front of Boaz and 
she did that so that she could marry a rich man and her and she and her mother-in-law would be taken care of. Then you have Rahab, who was a prostitute, but she still covered the men of God in her house. And from her lineage, from her bloodline, Jesus came from Rahab's bloodline. So Jesus is a descendant of a prostitute? Get out of here. Nobody told me that. You have Deborah, who's mm-hmm. a judge. And she sent someone, her right-hand man, to go to war. And he told her, I will not go to war if you don't go with me. And Deborah said to him, I will go with you, but let it be known. When we win this war, a woman will take credit for it. And I never knew any of this growing up in the Pentecostal church. You know, we were made to believe you you can't say no to your husband. And, you know, you're just here to serve a man. You just, my father said, you're going to be good for nothing but being a mom. And let me tell you, Hmm. I was a stay-at-home mom. I love my children. I raised amazing children. Um, Mm -hmm. But man, no, you know, I did not. I did not grow up in a home where a woman was empowered. So, at the age of thirty-six, when I got divorced, I decided to go back to school with my GED because I went. I put myself through school for the GED because it wasn't important to my parents, and I, I just felt like already I was pulled out of school. You guys make me feel. Like, I'm the worst person on earth because I had a baby. You guys made me feel worthless. So now I feel even more worthless because I don't even have a diploma. So I went to get my GED on my own when I was 18. And, but now I was married with a GED, and I, I still felt like, wow, all I have is a GED. So when I got divorced, it was a big uh, shame that I had to overcome just to even mm. make it into the college because I did not go to school online. I went to school at night you know, in a traditional school setting. And, um, man, I got my degree in behavior, human behavior and psychology. And I believe the reason I got an A, the reason I graduated Sigma Cum Laude, was not because I was so smart, but because every, every single research paper that I wrote was about my own dysfunction and why Mm. I was codependent and why I didn't believe in myself. And everything made so much sense that after I graduated, I decided I'm going to teach women how to open their eyes and see how their behavior, their own choices are keeping them back. But it's because they don't know. They don't know what I know. So that's where it began. And that's how I started helping women. That is an amazing story. And I love all of the different ways that you just illustrated for us how important it is to do the research yourself and learn for yourself and learn the Bible yourself and recognize all the things that we aren't traditionally told. I grew up also in the Christian faith, and we aren't told to be a strong, empowered woman. We are told to be meek and humble and and submissive, and all of the traits of the Proverbs 31 women are not what you just described, but yet, like you said, they're all there. And it's just not how it's interpreted and told to us and conditioned for the people that that are often growing up in the church. And so... And even like you said with your degree, like you were researching you and all the things that you needed to know and you had a vested interest and an incredible appreciation for having that education. So it makes complete sense to me that you graduated so well in your class. And so I want to start there. When we get back, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Again, my name is Carla Taylor. This is the Bring Your Brilliance show on the Inspired Choices Network. We're talking to Linda Hales. She has a, a a program called Print Money Down Demand. We're going to be talking more about that too when we get back and we'll be right back. We all have a personal brand. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. What if you knew how to clearly and confidently communicate your value in a compelling way? Tune in to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor to discover the tools, resources, and inspiration you need to get started and keep growing. Are you ready to make your mark? Learn how to bring your brilliance by listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. 
Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor. To join today's conversation, call in the U.S. at 815-880-8255 or Canada at 613-800-8736 or Skype at Inspired Choices Network. Or ask a question or send a comment by email at bringyourbrilliance at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show and podcast. I'm your host, Carla Taylor. We're here listening on Inspired Choices Network, and we're talking with Linda Hale. Linda, right before the break, you were just telling us about how you went and got your degree and how important it was for you to learn, even for yourself, what you'd been going through, and then you came out of that determined to, to help others and teach others what you had now learned. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was. So, so you know, what you happened next? Keep going. <laughs> keep going, or if you want to, <laughs> like, then you okay, from that right. to where you are today. So let's keep going through that, and then we want to get into to the really what it is that we want to learn about how to make money now. So let's let's talk about that too. So then I I I, I got divorced. It was 2010, um, and I I went through. I was homeless. The way that I ended up homeless. I went to to the grocery store to buy food to cook, and when I got home, my ex-husband had changed the locks on our door. And so I came back oh, to wow. cook dinner, but I came back to my, my key doesn't work, and I'm homeless. I don't work. All I have is the gasoline in my car. He's called the bank to, uh, you know, uh, report my debit card lost, so I don't have access to any money. And at that moment, as I am walking away from my home and the kids are looking at me through the window and I am losing my mind because I was homeschooling uh, one of my kids at that time. I didn't know how to not be with without my babies. So at that moment, <clears throat> I thought that it was the worst moment of my life. I thought oh, it was yeah. the end of wow. my, my world. I didn't know what I was going to do. I I even called the police because, you know, my ex husband was a cop and some of the cops that showed up were people that I knew. And they were like, Linda, because you guys don't have a court order, you know, the kids have to stay with the last parent that they were with. So we can't we can't even force him to give you the baby. And so I started screaming and they were like and they were like, Linda, I know this is awful, but you you're going to have to go to court because there's nothing legal. He didn't do anything criminal. He's their father. And I was screaming, oh, and he was like, my oh, my gosh. God, Linda. Wow. Yeah, the one particular cop that was talking to me, who was a good friend of ours, he was like, Linda, please stop screaming. But, you know, you can't be out here disturbing the peace, and I'm not, I don't want to arrest you. And I was like, you're really going to arrest me because I want my kids? Like, what is wrong with these people? So I literally walked away wow. so defeated. I, I walked away defeated. I felt like I had been kicked at the lowest to the lowest point of my life, and I went to to a woman's shelter to get uh, services. Like two days later, I slept in my car for two days behind uh, a dumpster of a Burlington coat factory. And you know, it, this is important. It's I can't tell my story. People can't really understand why I'm so passionate about making money and why mm -hmm. I talk the way I do and why I'm so you know quote unquote gangster. You know, people like to say, Linda, you're so gangster. <laughs> It's because I'm so passionate about women making their own money, you know? Yeah. And it's because I was in such a crappy place, you know? And I went to go get those services from the shelter. And I, oh, my God, they gave me a letter so I could go to this other place where people donate furniture, kind of like a Goodwill, but way lower quality than Goodwill. Basically, wow. people, basically as a place, I, I don't know, they probably get things out of the dumpster. But I, they gave me a letter to go to this place and get some furniture. And um, I, I wrote a bad check to a U-Haul company so I could go get some a, a couch and a love seat from this place. And it was, like, full of cat hair. And I'm, aller I'm severely oh my allergic gosh. to cats. And so I remember oh, that I was no. like, really? Really, I came here for this? But, you know, um, talk about humble pie. My God, yes. you know, did I have to put my pride in my pocket and go through some things like, you know, when you, I know we're, you're a woman, I'm a woman, I don't know how many of our listeners are women, but 
I, I don't, you know, I totally understand women when, when we say, man, I went through some things. And so from yeah. that, from that, I learned, here I am today. When he changed the locks on that door today, 10 years later, I can look back and say, that was the best thing, hands down. I'm so thankful to him. I'm so grateful to that man for doing that to me. Because from that, this Linda, who was here all the time, I didn't reinvent mm. myself like people say. I was there all the time. Mm. But that situation was like a fire, was like that gold, was like that, was like that diamond that needs to be pressed and broken down so the diamond could come through. Because the diamond was always yes. there under the charcoal. Right? right? So it just needed to go through a process of pressing of heat uh, in order for, be, you know, for it to shine like that. So that's what happened to me. When he did that, I became the diamond that was under there the whole time. And so I moved to Texas from Orlando, Florida in 2013. And um, what's really cool, <laughs> the, the economy was better here. So I, I transferred from a job in Florida making $39,000 a year. And I went and I took another job at a new place in Texas doing the same job, but I gave myself a fat raise. I, I, gave, I went to making from 39 to making 55 a year. So I was like, yes. Nice. Finally, I see some, some money. And so then right. I started online coaching as a relationship coach because I thought that women needed to know that the patterns of behavior to look for in men and the patterns of behavior to look for in themselves. Where did your uh, belief system begin? Was it your parents like it was with me at 16? How old were you when you started developing these beliefs that you needed to be a doormat, that you needed to put up with cheating, that you needed to do this? And so I started empowering women, but not by making their own money. But relationships was very comfortable to me because I wasn't mm -hmm. making the kind of money I'm making now. So I really didn't think I could teach women how to make money, but I can teach women how to start choosing better relationships and how to have better self-esteem. So I started with mm. that. But very quickly, my, I started getting clients that were doctors. I started getting clients that were pharmacy owners. I don't, for whatever reason, people in the medical field <laughs> were my clients. So they were paying me mm. very well, and I was hopping on planes to go see them for VIP days. And I started posting my life like most influencers do online, you know, hopping on yes. a plane. Hey, guys, I'm going to Omaha. Hey, guys, I'm going to Nebraska. Hey, guys, I'm going to Vegas. Hey, oh, what are you doing there? Oh, I'm seeing my client. Oh, I'm seeing a client. And people were like, Linda, I know that you're a relationship coach, but teach me how to get VIP clients too. And at right. that moment, I was like, oh, well, I can't teach you that. I don't know. I mean, I'm just a relationship coach. No, really, you could teach me how to make money. And I was like, no, 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 I can't. Right? And a lot of people, well, I won't say a lot. It was three specific people got upset with me on Facebook because I wouldn't coach them in, in business because they thought I was being stingy <laughs> or I was really, like, I didn't want to coach them. I didn't feel comfortable coaching in business because mm -hmm. I hadn't been a business coach. So then I right. wrote a book. And people were like, well, I want to learn how to write a book. And that's how I started business coaching. I said, okay, well, I could teach you how to write a book because I wrote one. Right. So I started charging people to help them be authors, and they would write and publish their books through Amazon. And then what would happen, Carla? A book is a great place for you to start your speaking career. Right. So I was like, oh, I could totally relate, like, how to write a book that's going to set you up for speaking gigs. You have something to sell in the back of the room because making money does make sense to me. Like, boom, boom, boom. I can put together a business from anything that comes out of your mouth. I can give you a profit <laughs> for it. Oh, girl, we can do this, 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 this. Yeah, honey, we can make this money in 90 days. You know what I mean? So right. that's how I got my feet wet in business. And people were like, yes. So then I did a tech talk which I was dreaming of doing TED Talks when I was in my abusive marriage. And if you know anything about TED Talks, their, their byline is uh, ideas worth sharing. And yes. when I was in that abusive marriage, I didn't feel that I had an idea worth sharing. But if you watch my TED mm. Talk, you will know that uh, I did have great ideas worth sharing. And part of it, I spoke about it here in the first segment, which was part of my story. And so... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, you know, we just morph. And I, and I tell people all the time, you know, you see me now making $25,000 a month, but uh, Malcolm Gladwell has a book called The Outliers where he speaks about the 10,000-hour rule or the 10-year mm -hmm. rule where 
you have to put in 10,000 hours. You have to put in 10 years to become an overnight success. <laughs> right. Right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm an overnight success because I've been doing this for 10 years, man. And I just now started getting... <laughs> you just start to see the results. And what I love about what I do, Carla, is that truly the coaching industry is amazing because you can pay someone to shorten the time line to mm. bridge the gap you don't have to put in 10 years all you need to do is say here's my money teach me exactly what i need to do and i will do it and so yeah what but he, he, here's my but or here's my caveat or here's here's my however uh, <laughs> a lot of the coaching industry has turned into people that are oh, i'm so scared to do this i'm going to give you my money but i'm still scared you can't with one breath say I want to make all this money, and then and the other person said, but I'm so scared because that means you're not coachable. So the right. so people that I work with, I've made a name for myself in the in the business coaching world because I work with people who already have a business idea, who already have been mm -hmm. making some kind of money, who already have results, whether paid or unpaid, you know, or they're transferring a skill set that they do in corporate America into entrepreneurship. And so those are like my sweet spot clients because they're not afraid, number one, to invest in themselves to get the knowledge mm -hmm. that they need to get. And number two, they're not scared because they already call the shots in the corporate world. They're, managed, they're in management. They're in, uh, you know, lower tier management or C-level management. Or like I said, you know, at the beginning, I was working with a lot of women in the medical field. And it makes mm -hmm. sense as a relationship coach why so many of my clients were in the medical field because women in the medical field are such nurturers that they didn't know how to break that off and separate it from a relationship. You don't have to come into a marriage or a relationship to nurture a man out the gate. What is that? You nurture your children. But mm -hmm. so many women want to come nurture a man. So anyway, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> that is how I started doing what I'm doing in the business world. And it's been amazing because I come with this with with my battle scars. I come with wounds that are that are just starting to heal over and so I have a lot of passion about you need to make your own money. I don't want you to be home. Right. I don't want you to sleep in right. your car. I don't want you to be on food stamps, girl. You don't have to do that. You can make your own money. And so I mean I, you can even hear it right now when I'm when I'm talking, I'm just so passionate. You are. You're so passionate and I love that you are passionate about what you just said about the coaching industry is, is helping other people shorten the curve and not have to go through everything that you went through to learn these hard lessons and now the rest of us can benefit from that. And I know when you and I were talking, uh, we did a, I think it was a Zoom call or something that we got on, but you were, because, you know, everybody's doing Zoom calls, but, um, but you, um, you were talking about the skill sets. And I think you talked about, I don't know if you remember what you said exactly, but I remember you said there were like three different skill sets that you need to be able to master in order to sell on uh, your, your programs. Do you remember what you were saying about that? <laughs> I, I know, I just randomly I put that on you. Well, it's okay. But the point you were making no, was the, the ask for money. You do? Okay. <laughs> because it, it's it's my it's my uh what do we call it? It's my structure, it's my system. It's I believe this wholeheartedly. You need number one, you need to develop the high achieving mindset that allows you okay. to even believe that you can charge what you're worth. That's number one. Number two, then you need the skill set to actually get prospects on a call. Because if you're in business you're going to have to sell, right? And number three, right. then you need to master the art of having authentic conversations that guide that prospect that's on the call to the sale. So you need to learn how to, converse, how to have a conversation that leads to enrolling that person in your program, right? So those are the three things. You need to develop the high-achieving mindset. If you need help doing that, you can go buy the book called Mindset. Um, it talks about growth mindset and fixed mindset. And so many of us have a fixed mindset. And we don't even know that mm -hmm. it's a fixed mindset because we bring it from our upbringing. So you need the high achieving mindset. You need the skill, the skill to get prospects on a call. And then you need to master the art of that conversation, being authentic. So it doesn't feel salesy or, but wait, there's more, you know, at the end. You don't need to sound <laughs> like an infomercial. <laughs> 
Right. Well, and I think that's one of the things that so many people are struggling with the most, that they're competent in what they do. They know how to be a coach. They coach people really well when they do get in front of them, but that ask for money. And even knowing how to package it and all of the things that that you help with so much, but so many people are uncomfortable because they don't want to ask or they don't want to come across as exactly what you just said. And But wait, there's more. So what would you say to somebody who's struggling with that? Well, again, the online, being in business online has done two things for people. It has, number one, shown us that it's very easy to make money, actually. Number two, it has shown us where we are lacking a skill. And so instead of saying, I don't know how to sell, let me go learn. We're like, oh, my God, I'm so scared of selling. I don't want to come across as salesy or pushy. I don't want to just don't want to seem that way. And somehow we believe that because we're post. <laughs> Yeah, because we're posting pictures on Facebook or we're writing this long motivational post that that's all I need. And people will see that I know what I know, I'm good at what I do, and they're just going to come to me. But people never come to you, right? The only time people come to salespeople is when the pain is really great. Like when you need a new car, you don't want to go to the car. You already know you're going to get ripped off. You already know that you don't know how to negotiate, but you need a car. So you go to the dealership and you get a car, right? So, you know, right, mo- right. for the most part, the only salespeople that have people coming to them are appliances because you need a refrigerator and a stove and a washer and dryer. You have cars, <laughs> right? And you have homes. And a lot of people don't own a home. They live in apartments. But those essential things that people need to live, like the, the people at the clothing stores, they don't even got to sell you. you. You just walk in, you grab your clothes. So I don't even consider them, quote, unquote, real salespeople, you know. But we, don't, we're, mm-hmm. we are taught that sales is, is, is shady because the used car salesman is, is, is going to rip you off. And so women, come, right. you know, they come to the online space knowing that they have a great uh, knowledge inside of them that they can package and they can sell. But, oh, my God, people are going to think that I'm the used car salesman if I start to pitch myself. And if I start to charge a lot of money, then, you know, the whole charging a lot of money comes from your personal worth. I can always tell women that are in uh, relationships where she's not an equal with her man, um, where she has to ask permission. I, that's part of my questionnaire uh, when I'm pre-qualifying a client. And I see that we're going on break soon. <laughs> we could we could pick up here. But I'm like, are you in a yeah. marriage where you are equal or do you have to ask for permission from your husband? Because if that's so, we're going to end the call here. You know? And so, so people are like, wow. Let's, let's come back to this. I want to start with what you just said about people often think that sales are shady. They don't want to be a used car salesman. And and even positioning and knowing how to ask for more money and how to feel like you're worth it. I want to talk about all that when we get back from break. Again, my name is Carla Taylor. This is the Bring Your Brilliance show on the Inspired Choices Network. We're talking to Linda Hales, and we will be right back. Awesome. We all have a personal brand. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. What if you knew how to clearly and confidently communicate your value in a compelling way? Tune in to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor to discover the tools, resources, and inspiration you need to get started and keep growing. Are you ready to make your mark? Learn how to bring your brilliance by listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Do you struggle to answer what do you do because you do many different things? Do you want your future clients to know, like, and trust you? Do you want to make LinkedIn work for you? If you're ready for extreme clarity and confidence with opportunities flooding your LinkedIn inbox, Carla Taylor's Bring Your Brilliance Coaching Masterminds and Workshops give you the exact steps to get it done. Don't have time to do it yourself? Carla's LinkedIn content ghostwriting service is exactly what you need. Schedule your free consultation today at bringyourbrilliance.as.me or go to bringyourbrilliance.net. This is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor. To join today's conversation, call in the U.S. at 815-880-8255 or Canada at 613-800-8736 
or Skype at Inspired Choices Network. Or ask a question or send a comment by email at bringyourbrilliance at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. You are listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show. I am your host, Carla Taylor. We are here on Inspired Choices Network. We are talking with Linda Hales, who is talking all about how to make money now and print money on demand. And Linda, before we go fully back into our conversation, I want you to take just a moment to tell our listeners how they can find you and how they can sign up for your amazing program and learn more from the master. Oh, my goodness. I feel so I'm the master. Thank you so much. You can find me at my website. <laughs> my website is my name, lindahales.com, and it's L-I-N-D-A-H-A-Y-L-E-S, Linda Hales. My, um, one of my friend's husbands calls me Hales. He's like, what's going on, Hales? So it's, it's, <laughs> so it's lindahales.com. And um, if you actually just send me a friend request on Facebook, I am a real person. I love, part of my brand messaging is fearlessly authentic. It's my byline. And I really mm-hmm. am this way. I'm not just like acting on radio. I really am this like ball of fire all the time. I'm always pumped up and excited. <laughs> and when I have a conversation with you, it's we're going to talk like this and I'm going to get you to get, I'm going to put yes. a fire under you and we're going to decide together if print money on demand is for you. There's no place to go sign up for it because I really vet the woman that I bring into the program because every one of my clients gets results and they get results mm. right away. So um, if you're not at the place where that can happen for you, we will talk about how, how we'll talk about how to get you ready for a, to, for you to launch a high ticket offer and how to, you know, get you to that place, maybe some other coaching lower tier thing is, is, is for you. But either way, um, we're going to have a great conversation and I promise you that it, it will be life changing because that's just what I do. It's my gift. So yeah, lindahales.com. Awesome. Send me a friend request on Facebook. Yeah. Yes. And I can or, vouch or, or for you. You are a real person. Yes. You are like this every time I talk to you. So yes. Absolutely, get to know Linda because she will change your life. Thank you. So, speaking of changing <laughs> lives and <laughs> going from believing sh- sales are shady and not feeling comfortable, even charging more, a lot of people think, oh, well, maybe I can offer something for like $17 or $97 or, <laughs> you know, some low amount. So, what do you say to people to help them break through some of that? When you were just saying that, I was rolling my eyes so hard that I think people could see it <laughs> through the radio. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I'm like, oh, face palm. Oh, my God. Did she really say $97? I want to throw up. You know? <laughs> right. But how many coaches do you see only asking for that much, if that much? So let me tell you, when I was on the scene as a relationship coach, I launched my business on a live stream platform called Periscope. If there are any young bucks on here, uh, they probably don't know what Periscope <laughs> is, but if you are, if you're my age, I'm 47. In 2015, I was, I was watching live streams from people on Periscope, and I was like, man, I would love to go live. So finally, I joined a group of other entrepreneurs, and we would go live together like every Friday night um, from 7 p.m. Hmm. to 9 p.m. We each had a 15-minute slot. And so I got my I got my nerve up to go live. Um, oh, Christine says she used Periscope. Yay! So I did. On Periscope, <laughs> I know what it is Saturday, too. <laughs> okay, great. So one Saturday morning, I got gangster and I decided to go live without my group of entrepreneur friends. I'm like, you know what? Let me see if I go live by myself. How many viewers I'm gonna have, right? Because here's mm-hmm. the one thing: people are concerned with likes and views, right? So I was like, ooh, let me see mm-hmm. how many views I'm going to have. Let me see how many people are going to watch me. Well, to my surprise, I had 1,390-something, almost 1,400 people watch me live. Wow. It blew my mind. And so I saw the numbers, and the hearts were going all over the place. And I was like, Psh. in my head, I was like, oh, my God, I have to sell something. Because why would I not sell <laughs> something? But I didn't have anything to sell. So off the top of my head, because everybody else was selling something for 97 bucks, I said, 
hey, everybody, I'm launching uh, a group coaching program called How to Find a Good Man. And everybody, all the hearts started going up like, oh, yeah, baby, I want that, I want that. And I was like, holy crap. Oh, shoot. What did I <laughs> Okay, it's $97, and it's for four weeks. And um, just send me a message. I didn't even have a sales page. Well, right. 12 people, 11 people signed up. And what was amazing was the first person was from New Zealand. The next person was from Australia. The next person was from the UK. Another lady was from Costa Rica. And everybody else signed up from different states. And I just, I couldn't believe, like, I'm telling you the story right now. And I'm still, I take myself back to that moment where I said, if it weren't for Periscope, if it weren't for the internet, I would never meet anyone in New Zealand. I don't even have a freaking mm. passport at that point. I didn't even have a passport. <laughs> I'm like, this internet thing is powerful AF. Like, it's powerful. <laughs> and so I delivered the freaking program, which was so draining because all of the women that signed up, they needed therapy. They did not need coaches. They needed therapy. Oh, my God. Everyone was so draining. But it was my <laughs> first experience that forced me. It forced me to raise my rates because having uh, launched something at that low of uh, entrance, uh, you know, entry level, it attracted a lot of broken people. And I didn't understand that at that moment, my messaging was broken. I was speaking to the broken women. Mm. I was speaking to the woman that I had just left. And so, therefore, I attracted broken people. And so we do that in all of the industries. It doesn't matter what kind of business you have. I can sit down with you in 15 minutes and find out why you are not attracting high-paying clients, why you can't launch a high-ticket offer because you're, you know, you're trying to fix broke people's problems and broken. Right. Broke and broken. Right? So uh, mm. you know how they say bro uh, broken people break others, hurt people hurt others. Right? If you're talking mm -hmm. to the broke woman, how is she going to pay you a high-ticket thing? So – uh, it right. took me a while to learn, but I raised my rates slowly from that. And so I, I, then I went to uh, charging $1,400 a month to, to coach someone. And then I learned a month is not long enough to give someone transformation, lasting change. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still need to charge more. So because I was broke, but I had a lot of, I'm very bold. You know, my very first blog was called Courage Factor. I love courage. Courage means that you're mm -hmm. scared as heck, but you're still moving forward, right? So um, I love – I'm very courageous. I'm bold. I'm, when, I, when I work – well, I'm never going to go back to corporate America. But when I work in corporate America, <laughs> I'm the type of employee that you want on your team because I buy into the vision and uh, I make it happen. And I am at every sales meeting. I'm excited. I'm pumped. I usually am the one that carries the team because I have something to prove. You know, like I mm. walk on water. I tell people all the time, Peter was the only disciple that walked on water, and I am Peter, baby. You know, so <laughs> I come in there, and I intimidate men. <laughs> I intimidate men, and they're like, here comes the water walker. That's right. It's Monday, and I'm taking your butt all week this week again. You know, so... <laughs> So I, I, I had the courage to just launch myself on Periscope. Then I had the courage to raise my rates on my own and try to figure stuff out. And then when I saw that, okay, Linda, you are not getting anywhere by trying to figure this out. You're going to have to work overtime, save your income tax money. You're going to have to do something so that you can invest in a coach. And so I have right. invested in several coaches. And mm -hmm. – um, the first time that I was in a group program is what sold me on how I should deliver print money on demand. At first, I used to think, no, mm -hmm. I just want to pay a coach to be with me alone and just have the coach all to myself. But I was in a group program where one of the persons launched a $25,000 annual offer, and they sold it all on Messenger. They didn't have to go to wow. the sales page for it. All they did was send some messages, and her tribe was on it. And she sold out 10 spots at $25,000 in a week. 
And so wow. had I not been rubbing shoulders with her, had I not seen somebody in the group that I had paid to be part of, because I totally believe that you can pay for friendships. You need to pay to play. You need to pay to be mm. in the room with some people. You know, some people are like, oh, you can create your own table. You're, nobody's going to sit at your table if it's not really a great one. So sometimes <laughs> you got to go pay to sit at some of the people's table before you can create your own. Mm -hmm. So I totally believe in investing in myself to go be in another room. I mean, uh, corporate America and, and, um, and other people have done this. It's the reason why you join golf clubs. It's the reason why you join private clubs. You know, it's the reason why there are some networking groups that you pay to be part of, and you see that the networking relationships are higher caliber. So long story short, mm -hmm. um, I invested in, in that group program, and because I was rubbing shoulders with her, I grew from her from her breakthroughs. And I was having trouble charging uh five thousand dollars at that point and she was charging twenty five so I raised my rates from three thousand to ten thousand and I started getting paid in mm. full clients. And so it's why I do what I do today. Um I'm just so excited and I know we you know we, we have we don't have much longer to, to be on the show for but um I'm so excited to share my passion with anyone who's listening, especially women. Yes I coach men but I market to women. Because when mm -hmm. you can teach a woman to create her own money, like my client Veronica just closed a $10,000 client and an $8,000 client last week. They're both paid in full, and she's only been working with me a month. The people in Print Money on Demand, one lady didn't have any clients since November, but in two weeks, she's closed $10,700 in sales. So when you can teach wow. a woman to create her own economy, and I'm talking through the pandemic. I'm not talking about last year. I'm talking about right now. Right, right now, Veronica just texted me last night, Linda, I just closed a $10,000 client from New York. And I was like, I love it. Right you, now in May amazing. of 2020, absolutely, this is happening, yes. Absolutely, this is happening. And right when the, when the government did the lockdown for almost every state, I had a $25,000 a month in April. And I had a $12,000 month. I mean, Congratulations, that's awesome. And, and a, and a $12,000 a month in April, yeah. And so May already started amazing. So the first week is just yes. ended yesterday, and I had a five thousand dollar week. I love teaching That's women awesome. how to do the same for them. Thank you, Carla. Well, you are so passionate, and I just love every time I ever talk to you. I always learn something. <laughs> I come away so inspired and so motivated, and I love what you said about paying to play and getting yourself in a new room and getting around people. And so many of us tend to hang out with the same people and if the people around us are saying things or they don't have money for things or they're worried about what they don't have or all the conversations a lot of us are hearing more than ever before actually some people that I never knew had some of these mindsets that are coming out now as people are facing incredible hardships but they be, they some of the people I used to be inspired by are now like woe is me and I'm like wait you wait what <laughs> like you know and so I've I've myself, the reason I found you is because I paid to play in a different room. And I, I got to be around people and I realized that if I don't invest in myself, no one else is going to. And I think that's one of the biggest lessons and why it is so important to find a coach who inspires you and find a coach you know you can work with and find someone who lights a fire under you. And that's what I love most to think about you, Linda, is that you light that fire and then you don't you don't let up. <laughs> You're like, boom, boom, boom. This is what you do. This is what you need to do. But like you said, you also find those people Thanks, who are ready. Carla. So we've, yes, I was going to ask you to say one more thing because we've got just a minute left. But go ahead. I want to say one more thing. I want to say this. Yes. It's just the one line. I just typed it in. May your fear of being broke be greater than the fear of selling. Amen. I'm going to leave you with that. Yes, May absolutely. Okay. <laughs> thank you so, so much, Linda. Thank you for getting up early and being on fire even early in the morning for you. I know we're not even in the same time zone, but we so appreciate you coming and bringing your passion and bringing your story and bringing your inspiration and showing all of us what this can really do and what this can be. So, again, this is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show. My name is Carla Taylor. I am here to help you light your LinkedIn on fire and get some really cool things going on with your LinkedIn. I've got some great programs coming up. And, of course, you can always reach out 
And next week we're going to be talking about soul songs, and it's going to be a totally different show, but we're here on Inspired Choices Network with all kinds of inspired choices. Remember to be bold, be brave, be brilliant, and be you. And like Linda would say, be fearlessly Thanks for listening to another authentic. episode of Bring Your Brilliance with Carla Taylor. For the latest updates and info on personal branding, please follow and interact with Carla Taylor on LinkedIn. And be sure to visit www.itstimetobringit.com. Join Carla Taylor every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then.